Hey folks, how's it going? This is Iron Seagull here, back with another Sims Info and Thoughts video. So this is going to be a catch up on some interesting tweets from the Simgers over the past few days. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're gonna start off with something a little wild. So you may remember in that Behind the Sims Summit livestream they did last fall, they showed some concept art pieces from upcoming kits and packs, one of them being of New Worlds, and they had two concept art pieces. So safe to assume those were for two different worlds, right? Wrong. Simgur Morgan tweeted that these were very early concept pictures for San Sequoia, and that it was fun watching everyone speculate about them when the teaser came out. So yeah, it seemed like that might have been the case because I noticed there were some buildings at the beginning of the trailer when the kids popping the wheelie that, oh, wait a minute, they look kind of like those buildings in the concept art that I thought was going to be for a completely different world. Maybe something inspired by Mexico or something in South America, but no, they're just both of the same world. I find that really weird that they did that because it's not like they just develop one pack at a time. They probably did have concept art for the expansion pack after growing together too as well, right? So yeah, that is strange, but hey, at least we know that we're still going to get at least more than one world this year. And now it's completely up in the air as to what it could be, which is both good and bad because they could give us yet another US inspired world, or it could actually be something really interesting and unique compared to what we have in the game so far. One thing that might be very handy for traveling between worlds is the suitcase that we've seen in the trailers. Matnetic confirmed that we can place the suitcase in our Sims inventory and keep it with us wherever we go. Though nothing said about whether it has its own inventory, it probably would I guess, otherwise I don't really see much point in the suitcase being functional. But that would be really cool. and. Well, I know a lot of people want hotels. I don't think this is a hint at a hotels pack coming because imagine if they really did just have a suitcase in this pack, but not a hotels one. So unless we did get suitcases in both, but yeah, <laughs> I think that would be cool just to be able to use suitcases to make traveling around the world more immersive feeling. Simgru Morgan posted four pictures of San Sequoia, starting off with a couple of shots of the bay in the evening in Hopewell Hills, then a shot of Gilbert Gardens of a parking lot full of cars that we cannot drive, and finally Anchor Point Wharf. And this last screenshot interests me the most. This looks the most unique compared to what we've seen so far, where it does kind of stand out more on its own visually compared to Willow Creek, whereas the rest of the world does look pretty similar to that base game world. It actually looks more of an urban setting that I was hoping for in the first place. It is, according to Morgan, on the edge of the downtown. And she's also hyped for Hopewell Hills because it's supposed to be the most dense suburban neighborhood they've done in The Sims 4 yet, so that's kind of intriguing. I haven't really been impressed by Hopewell Hills so far, but getting back to Anchor Point Wharf, I am looking forward to seeing more of this place. I think those brown buildings in the back are a playable lot. Not sure if it's a rec center or something else. Could be a gem, I suppose. And of course, I gotta point out that food stall, or assuming it's a food stall anyways. Not sure entirely, but yeah, I know a lot of people get annoyed at these stalls nowadays, but I guess it's the only real solution to having a restaurant outside of the lot limit where it's out in the open space. But I guess this means that we are getting new recipes in this pack, at least probably like two or three, so I'm curious to find out what they are. Actually, straying away from the topic of worlds for a minute here, Morgan did tease infant foods in a poll saying, what would you rather feed your infant? Not that there aren't more options in game. Papaya paste, mashed peas, ice cream, and smashed lemon. And Ninja says there are many more options in the game. Stop fibbing, Morgan. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they don't make polls big enough. So at the very least, we are getting new food in the base game to support the infant's life stage. And now for the number of lots that are going to be in the world of San Sequoia. Simgru Morgan says there are 12 playable lots. Each neighborhood has four. They always determine how many is best for each pack for performance, 
people with min spec PCs need to play too, and will weigh against gameplay needs, it's always a series of thoughtful and carefully considered conversations. So I'm not surprised because that's the same number of lots that Copperdale had with the previous expansion pack, High School Years. But man, it really sucks that no matter how much we complain about the small worlds, it seems like that's just never gonna change. Even with what Morgan said about performance, is it really asking so much to have 15 lots because three neighborhoods, five lots each, Sounds reasonable to me. It's still not a great number, but at least it is a somewhat okay one. At least unlike Copperdale, we won't have two lots taking up for crucial gameplay. We just have the rec center when growing together, and I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be all that vital to my gameplay. I'll just have to play with it myself to find out. With these worlds getting smaller and smaller, it feels tougher to make each world feel self-sufficient without having to go to another world just to do another thing. Like say, if there isn't enough room to put in a gym because you have so many other lots and houses you want to have there, then it's like, oh, I gotta go from San Sequoia to Del Sol Valley to work out. It just feels really weird and a little immersion breaking. There's also the pre-made families, which personally I don't want to get rid of because they add to the lore. And it looks like the worlds really are continuing to just get smaller and smaller. We did have worlds like Windenburg and San Myshuno that were in the high 20s, or even hitting 30 if you count each apartment lot individually in San Myshuno. And then we have worlds like Brindleton Bay and Evergreen Harbor and Mount Komorebi at around 15 lots. And now it seems that 12 may be the new standard. So how much longer until that lowers to 10? And another thing that really puzzles me is that they have raised the minimum requirements. When The Sims 4 came out, it was only on 32-bit support. Then when Get Together came out, it supported 64-bit officially. And now it's only 64-bit. They dropped 32-bit and the Legacy Edition. So the requirements are higher, yet the worlds are getting smaller. That does not make sense to me. So I don't get what raising the requirements to 64-bit has allowed the team to do that they could not do before. In regards to diversity and cultural representation in worlds, Morgan says the team does care about that too. We're always considering varied location fits for each pack. Something I love about this pack is the focus we put on different cultures across build by, pre to sim, and with our pre-maids. We know families look different to everyone. After that, Henford Hen says, We really appreciate diversity in Create a Sim, Build By, and with the Sims themselves, but it really does feel difficult sometimes to fully represent oneself if a lot of the worlds don't reflect the countries people are from. And Morgan replies with, We care so much about this. When we add a new world that is inspired by another cultural location, we want to be respectful and do that culture justice with supporting content in our features. We are always looking for opportunities to branch out and explore more diversity. We want players to get the content they'd expect from a pack's theme. We have so much content for families slash different age groups in this pack. I think a melting pot location that can represent family across various cultures is a lovely fit that supports player content expectation. I like the acknowledgement that cultural representation should be done through gameplay features and not just cosmetics. But I'm really getting the vibe here that they often have to choose between decent cultural representation and a good amount of gameplay features. And that really comes through in packs like Island Living and Snowy Escape where it's like, hey, that's so awesome that we get more cultural representation and worlds that have a different sort of feel compared to what we typically get in The Sims. But then other parts of the gameplay suffer, like the lack of actual scuba diving locations in Island Living and Snowy Escape like with the rock climbing being like a much more linear version of Jungle Adventure and no snowboarding or skiing outside of Mount Komorebi, not even like a half pipe to practice on. So that is a real shame. Truly it must have been a big talking point at the beginning of development for growing together as to whether to include a new world at all because the Sims 3 Generations, which has inspired so much desire for something like it in The Sims 4, does not have a world. 
They easily could have just opted out of including a world this time too, to focus more on the gameplay, so I wonder if they made the right call with this. Also, in terms of the earlier packs being bigger worlds in general, Simgrivorkin did say that in earlier packs we were still learning. A lot of consideration and planning goes into not only how we can make each pack performant, but also how we can keep the game performant for years to come. We know players love new worlds, so we're going to be making them for a long time. I think a lot of this stems from how in The Sims 4 you have all your worlds in one save, which is totally different from what the previous games did. But even still, I feel like just having three more lots would not be a big deal. But now with all that off my chest, let's talk about something more lighthearted. So following up on Simguru Nova's pictures that I covered in a recent video, Simguru Ninja says, we're checking out San Sequoia, be right there, with this really adorable gif of a servo carrying a baby on its back. So yep, confirmation that this does work with more than just the human sims, though I'm a little scared to find out how that would look on werewolves when they're running on all fours, unless maybe that animation gets disabled when they're using the baby carriers, but I highly doubt they would do that. Then Simguru Connor posted a whole thread of pictures and gifts of a new pre-made sim named Kyle, who is basically completing the beanie trifecta of Nox from Eco Lifestyle, Lou from Werewolves, and now him. <laughs> so Kyle thinks! And Kyle sips, so there's the power sip that Connor was teasing before even high school years came out. I even remember <laughs> I kind of started that because I was tweeting at him about the power sip they introduced in Werewolves. So yeah, interesting. Like <laughs> Undefeatable from Sonic Frontiers was playing. It just hit the chorus when I saw this thread. So it made the reveal of this almost year long hint just like extra mind blowing and surprising. <laughs> So then Kyle snacks, and then Kyle self-actualizes? <laughs> Kyle wants to move in! Kyle is great with kids and will look after them while you're gone. It's a cute little interaction. And Kyle meets someone eerily similar, one of the pre-made sims that appears when you first open create a sim. And then Kyle, just looking out at the San Sequoia Bridge that I still don't know the official name of. <laughs> but interesting, it looks like that is during the fall, kind of like Simguru Ninja's GIF. At least, I don't think it's summer. Like, the plants do look pretty, uh, pretty dead and not really green compared to what it would normally look like. So, I am guessing it's fall. We can also see Kyle rocking an infant to sleep with the rocking chair from Nifty Knitting, though we are getting one and growing together as well. One last thing is that child skills are apparently getting a rework in the next update. Simgru Morgan, while talking about CC that she uses at home, she mentions that the way child skills work hasn't always been my preference, so I have a mod for that. We did rework that in base game for growing together though. It's different from the mod I use, but cooler in my opinion. I can't wait to remove the mod and play the updated way when it goes live. I have no idea how this skill rework is going to change things, but I am looking forward to seeing how that will pan out. I mean, children could always use better gameplay. So that's pretty much it for now. Bummer about the world being so small once again, but hopefully they still nail the family gameplay aspect of growing together. And that wraps up another Sims Info Thoughts video, so feel free to let me know your thoughts on growing together so far in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with my latest gaming content. I will talk to you all later, and have a great day. Thanks for watching!